what image comes to mind when you hear the word refugee? These are the images that we think of. We know because these are actually some of the individuals that we met in refugee camps in Greece and Mexico recently. A few years ago, when we started hearing about refugees fleeing on foot by the tens of thousands, or crossing the oceans in overcrowded, inflatable boats, living in plastic tents on the dirt, and driven to desperation simply to survive, we got angry. We got angry that human life was again being dismissed so easily by the thousands, the hundreds of thousands, the millions. History was not only repeating itself, we as human beings were repeating history with a vengeance. Physical weapons of war have only become deadlier and more effective at causing pain and ending human life. The greatest weapons of oppression are not made of metal, but are instead the willingness of oppressors and those fighting for one side or another to kill and destroy. The United Nations calls the global refugee crisis the greatest humanitarian crisis of our time. We are brother and sister documentary photographers and freelance journalists working to raise awareness of this issue and spur people to take action in addressing this crisis. The situations facing many refugees and displaced people are desperate, and we are not callous or arrogant enough to think that we can truly understand what it means to have to flee for your life due to conflict or persecution. What we can understand, however, and what we have seen up close, is that refugees are often treated like commodities, too often treated as less than human beings in many ways. There can be a tendency from the public to confuse a person who happens to be living in a bad, dirty, or dangerous situation as being a bad, dirty, or dangerous person. And clearly, that is not the case. We believe that if someone is able to look into a stranger's eyes, perhaps they will fear that stranger a little less. The colorful portraits you see here are part of a global photo project called The Power of Faces, that we work on with our documentary photographer parents to put a human face to this global crisis. We intentionally crop out the context of the refugee camps to focus on the individuals, not merely the labels as refugees. We show people with their inherent courage, beauty, dignity, and grace. Most refugees have lost all their material possessions including their treasured family photographs. Now, having a physical photo of family or friends to hold in one's hand can be a great comfort in times of need. So we bring photo printers and instant cameras into refugee camps to give people proper portraits that they can keep. In most cases, these are the only physical photos they own since fleeing their homes. Having a photo taken by a third party is, in certain ways, validating. It shows that someone else recognizes them as a person, as an individual. It is incredibly powerful to give parents a photo of their children smiling, or to give a family what might be the only photo of them together. For those individuals that give us their permission to use their photos, we use these to raise awareness, like the ones you see here. To date, our project has distributed thousands of portraits to people living in refugee camps in Greece, Turkey, Mexico, and Bangladesh. Our intentions are to continue this project at other refugee camps around the world. The purpose of this behind-the-scenes perspective is to sh provide insight and hopefully encouragement for those interested in supporting displaced people around the world. In no way is this behind-the-scenes view intended to romanticize or glamorize the situation that millions of vulnerable people face. The considerations and logistics needed to print thousands of photos in refugee camps go well beyond the typical portrait setup. This isn't picture day at school. To take someone's portrait, there has to be a level of trust between the subjects and the photographers 
So we work hard to put people at ease to be, by being completely transparent and upfront about our intentions. We seek to raise awareness of inequality and injustice through our photographs, our words, and our actions. However, clearly our work has a long way to go, and we're here to ask for your help. What we hope you'll leave this talk with is an understanding that everyone can make a difference in some way or another if they have the passion to do so. We'd like to take you into the camps we documented in Tijuana, Mexico, and Chios Island in Greece. This is the Beretal refugee camp in Tijuana, Mexico, where thousands of people from the so-called migrant caravan were being detained. Here, you can see hundreds of people living in this room. Over 3,000 people were removed from the U.S.-Mexico border away from the views of news cameras and brought here, with hundreds more being added every day. People were crammed into every available space. Being so exposed, these people were highly vulnerable. There were barely any safety, medical, or basic services, and we were instructed to wear surgical masks and gloves because of fears that typhoid, tuberculosis, and even cholera would break out among the population. Our Mexico team consisted of only four people, our mother, father, and the two of us. On the grounds, our team needed um, teamwork, and age was not a limiting factor. At Baratol, Alexander was in charge of explaining our project and our intentions to people in Spanish, keeping the crowds organized, and moving the process efficiently along so we could provide as pleasant an experience as possible. I was in charge of taking the photos, often taking several poses of each person or group so we could give them multiple prints to keep. Our parents handled other logistics, such as on-site high-volume printing. There are many moments of joy and happiness in our interactions with the people in these photos, but there is also the reality of the challenges and hardships that refugees constantly face. We intentionally leave the photos realistic and unaltered to show the true faces of the people we've met. We believe it would be a disservice to sugarcoat or dilute the on-the-ground situation. Now, one of the great indignities of being a refugee is having to wait in line constantly for just about everything, whether that's going to the bathroom, waiting to eat, or for medical services, if any exist at all. We try to make our version of customer service as enjoyable and polite as we can. So we printed numbered cards from 1 to 300 to create an orderly crowd. People would draw their number to see their place in the queue and would not have to worry about losing their turn. To Tijuana, we brought multiple cameras and six portable printers capable of producing hundreds of photos each hour. In this way, we were able to serve hundreds here. Greece is a hot spot for refugee boat landings due to its close proximity to the Turkish coast. Over a million people have made the treacherous journey from Turkey since 2015, and hundreds of thousands of men, women, and children are detained in camps across Greece. Our team has been to Chios Island multiple times, and we were most recently working by the Vial refugee camp. This camp is located on a military base, so access is highly restricted. Since we are prohibited from entering the camp, we set up our makeshift studio across the road from the main gate. We hung our backdrops on scraggly bushes and between trees and ran a cheap spool of thread through branches to create a staging area to keep the crowds organized. Improvisation is a vital skill when working in unpredictable situations. In a dusty field, we had no electricity for our printers, but we were able to borrow a generator from a relief organization working in Vial called the Kios Eastern Shore Response Team. We encourage you to look them up and see the important work that they're doing. 
Every single person in these portraits has their own story to tell. This is because every single person in these portraits has suffered incredible pain and loss. Life for refugees is fragile, and we know we can't encapsulate their plights in a single photograph. Several months ago, our team received raw video footage of a tragedy that occurred not far from where we stood at the Vial camp. It was recorded on smartphones and showed a distraught man. His shirt was doused in fuel. Police were talking at him as others warned the crowd to get back to a safe distance. And they tried to stop him, but he was too fast with his lighter. And he ignited in flame. He had lit himself on fire. He fell to the ground, screaming. Others looked on in horror. And the video ended with him running off in the building, engulfed in flame. This man was 27 years old. We were told that he committed suicide because his asylum application was denied yet again. And according to local news, he suffered burns over 85% of his body and died in the hospital two days later. Make no mistake, the living conditions for these individuals are horrible. And refugees face countless risks every single day. Human trafficking, sex trafficking, crime, poverty, lack of education, lack of medical care, lack of hope, being prevented from earning a living, and waiting years in limbo with no ability to establish a new life are just some of the injustices that refugees face. We are not so naive to think that our world will be completely free from conflict, but we seek to shine a light on the innocent and oppressed so they are not forgotten, ignored, or erased. We work to show the humanity in this crisis and remind the world that refugees are not mere numbers and statistics, but individuals, each with their own hopes and dreams for a better life in a kinder world. These individuals matter. So we ask your help in raising awareness, informing the public, and spurring positive action in addressing this crisis. It is people like you and us who have the creativity, resources, and conviction to make our world a better place, one person at a time. Thank you.